Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show tonight. Tonight's guest, we have a success story. We have Kevin Williams out of Los Angeles, California. He's come to San Francisco to tell you his story. He has a story that needs to be told and needs to be heard, and we want you to give this, him your attention this evening and allow him to explain what he's doing and why he's doing it. And we want to welcome the brother to the show tonight. Welcome to the show, my brother. Oh, thank you for having me today. Right, right. It's a pleasure having you. You know, uh, you, uh, we want to talk about you first, mm. and then we want to get to what you're doing okay. uh, with your, your time today. Okay. Okay, uh, you were formerly incarcerated. Yes, I was. Okay, and how long did you do in, in prison? I did 35 years. 35 years in prison. How long have you been home, brother? I've been home two years and 10 months now. Two years and 10 months. Yes. Outstanding. Welcome home. Thank you. Welcome home. Okay. And you went to, to, to you went to, you went to a, a, a prison from Southern California and you did 35 years in prison. Yes, I did. You've been home a little, a little over, a little over two years and you're doing outstanding work. Now, we want to get to the roots of it. We want to let people know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay, and you started a foundation called the Aisha Foundation. A Aisha Academy. Aisha, Aisha Academy. Mm -hmm. And the academy that you started, you came home, and why did you start it? Well, first of all, I went to prison when I was 21 years old. And before then, uh, my mother was killed when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up with unrecognized anger, blaming God for something that a human being did. And I vowed that no other kid would have to go through what I went through. Mm -hmm. When tragedy happened in a kid's life between the ages of 12 and 17 years old, the state gives the guardian a welfare check and a social security check. And the kids do not get therapy. And so I didn't get therapy. I was 12, my sister was 10, my two brothers was five and six. Mm -hmm. And so I eventually going to prison mm -hmm. uh, for 35 years. But once in prison, I surrounded myself with the educational people and religious people, mm -hmm. you know. My grandmother brought me up good, and I knew these were the good people. These, these people had good in their heart. And so I started getting all my degrees. I started with an A degree, a BS degree, alcohol and drug certification, certified nursing assistant, uh, drafting trade, computer programmer, mm -hmm. FEMA, effective uh, communication and leadership, and senior tutor. And so I started teaching inmates how to read and write. And and I started programming in prison, you know. And after 25 years, I was wondering why God wasn't letting me out. Mm -hmm. And I realized that he wanted me to do his work inside. Right. So I started teaching inside, writing curriculums inside, in prison, and teaching inside. And then he decided to give me a second chance at life, and uh, a second chance at society. Right. And so I came out here to do his work. And I vowed that no other kid would have to go through what I went through. Right. And so I came out here and started Aisha Academy to help the homeless children. Uh, California has over 200,000 homeless children and between the ages of 12 and 25 years old. <coughs> and so I started Aisha Academy to help the homeless children to give them education and therapy. Mm -hmm. um, also opening up a transitional house for a repeat offender. 90% okay. of the juveniles that are in the system have trauma in their life right. or, or tragedy in their life. Yeah. Right. Now, okay, we have our own screen here. We want to give the the uh, uh, audience uh, opportunity to call in because you you need people to to ask questions and get understanding really what you're doing mm -hmm. and and we want to uh, focus on the screen in your homes mm -hmm. you have the the number to the studio on your screen you'd like me to call in and ask this brother some questions about what he's doing this man did all this time in prison right he came home with a different look at life he wanted to come home and make it to where Nobody has to go through what he went through, you know. So we want to give the number on the, on the screen. The number is 415-861-6648. want you to call in and, and ask questions about what he's doing because he's doing a wonderful thing. He's doing things that, you know, some people in society haven't done and, and haven't thought about doing. He came on from prison with a goal, with a change to change life. He can't change the world, but he can, he can change a small portion of it. And the youngsters, they need help. You know, he's willing to give help. So call in and, and ask this, this, this gentleman some questions 
about what he's doing because he need help. He needs he need to be he needs some funds for this program, and we're gonna make sure that he has his his, his website on the, the screen there. His his uh, what the www what is it www what app? GoFundMe. GoFundMe. Dot com. On the screen. Mm -hmm. So so write it down and get in contact with him. You know talk to him. He'll 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 he'll, he'll talk to you. He can talk. You know so 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 call him and and get on the computer and get in contact with him and uh, allow him to explain to you what he's doing. So uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, my brother. Yeah, like you said, you know, I want to help these youngsters. Um, I can't make a direct amends for what I did in life, but I can make an indirect no. amends by helping the children uh, change their life and make the right choices in life. Hello. 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 Yes. Yes. Um, I was just calling in just to say this is a wonderful thing that he's doing, and how could he do so much time and not come home angry and be willing to make a change? That's a, that's a good, a good question, and, and, and I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad you asked it, and he, I'm, I'm sure he wants to answer that. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, well, I put God first in my life inside, and so... By doing that, I prepared every day for when that day be, I may get that second chance at life. And I'm not bitter about what I did because I feel it was a blessing for me to go in there and get the education I had. To get, it, was, it was a book written by a rabbi priest, and he said, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, his son had a terminal ill disease, and he was a rabbi, and he was asking this question of God. And after reading that book, I realized I went through all this hardship in my life, my mother being killed when I was 12 years old, going to prison at 21 years old, and then spending 35 years in prison, you know. But God wanted me to be able to help all these other kids. So I had to go through all this hardship, you know, so I can show these kids that the glass is half full instead of half empty. If I can make it at 12 years old, you can. And so I don't have no other aspiration, dreams, other desires but to help the homeless children. And God gave me the second chance at life. And so I don't, that's why I'm out here, to do that, to do its work. Yes, yes. So, so I, I, did that ask you a question I missed? Yes, it did. Okay, we want to thank you for calling in. And uh, uh, I can say his, his web page is on the screen there. If you have any more questions, get, get with him personally, and he'll ask you questions. Okay, thank you. And what a great show you're doing too, Mr. James. Thank you, thank you also. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we we have we have the the children. You know, a lot of people throw children away. They don't want to help children. They don't want to help them because they well they they're young and they can get to get it on, get on their own. Well, well, a child is a child, and a child does childish things. So until he gets to a certain age, that's when he starts doing adult things. So they need help. And yeah. Well, you know, I worked in the homeless shelter for the last six months. I ran the winter shelter program last year from uh, November last year until March. Mm -hmm. um, uh, March the 1st uh, uh, this year. And when I learned that all these homeless children that comes in this, out here, most of the kids come out here for the fame, mm -hmm. you know, the movies, the uh, music industry, the modeling, you know, and they don't realize the cost of living is so high. Yeah. And so they end up homeless. Then you have the kids that come out here for the weather from the Midwest and the East Coast, and they come for the beaches and all that. Mm -hmm. And they end up homeless because the price of living in California is so high. Right. Then you have the kids from dysfunctional families, right. you know, with tragedy and trauma in their life, you know, and their parents own drugs, alcohol, and so they run away and they leave, you know. They can't stand to see their parents own drug alcohol, so they end up homeless. And then you have the kids from the foster care and adoptions. Uh, once they turn uh, 18 years old, they age out the system, you know, so they out there on the street. So that's how you end up with 20,000 homeless children, you know, between the ages of 12 and uh, 25 years old. Between 16 and 25, you have 10,000. And so this is what I'm trying to do, give these kids therapy. You know, I partnership with uh, a university uh, that interns have to do 3,000 hours before they get their master's. So they're going to give them group therapy. Then I partnership with El Camino College teen, uh, teen program that once they get their GED, they can go straight into El Camino College, you know. So I'm trying to give them an education and therapy, you know. Education is the way out of property, sure, sure, you know. And most of these kids just want love and support in their life, you know. Right. And somebody else. Right, right. Well, you're doing an outstanding job. It's an outstanding job. You came up, up at way, way up in the, at the San Francisco, and we want to try to assist you at, at getting some help, mm -hmm. assistance, and doing what you're doing. You have a, a, a house already? 
Yes, I'm in the process of uh, uh, leasing a property in Pomona, 30 bed transitional house, okay. and I'm used there for 16 to 25 year old youths. Okay. You know, coming out the system, the juveniles coming out the system, they need places to stay. Uh, these kids that when I aged out the foster care system, you know, mm -hmm. they need places to stay right, if they right. committed a crime and went to jail. Right. So that's what, and I'm giving them therapy, and uh, you know, I'm gonna have alcohol and drug cert. I have alcohol and drug certification, right. so we can give them a sub a, a, a substance abuse uh, treatment, right. uh, and then I have the interns that's gonna give them therapy. Right, right. Yeah. right. You can't, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. Well, yeah. well, well. Anybody have the experience? You have the experience. Yeah. You, know, you have the experience to give them what they need because you know what they need. Yeah. You know, you've been there. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I live with them. You know. Exactly. You know, exactly. for 35 years, I yeah. seen them come in and out the system. You right. know, the repeat offenders. You know, exactly. I remember this organization that a friend of mine started. <laughs> you know, motivational speakers, and he asked me to to, uh, to be a part. Yeah, and you know, yeah. and yeah. I loved it. You know, I mean, that's what I wanted to do: share with the kids and try to turn their life around. Why you yeah. keep coming back? And forth? I had one chance to get out and you keep coming keep back. Coming back. Yes. Coming back. I, yes. I, I, I can understand that. Yes. You know, why they keep coming back. I mean, yeah. you get one, one shot at freedom and then you decide to come back. Yeah. So, you know, we, you know, we see it all the time. They come back when you mm -hmm. ask, what, what's wrong? Is, is it hard yeah. out there to stay out in, in society? No, because you go back to the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, people, places, and things. You got to change all that around. You know, and start doing something that's constructive to stay out in society. You know, so, 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 so you're you're in the, you're in the Bay Area for what reason now? Well, I'm on a funding campaign. You know, I have a lot of people out here that supports me. You know, and I'm out here visiting everybody. You know, and uh, like I say, my GoFundMe campaign was just launched yesterday, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to raise the money for uh, this transitional house and uh, a homeless shelter. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, okay, okay well, well, so, so, so with the GoFundMe go find uh, uh, campaign that you're, that you, that you, you've launched yesterday, this is to raise the money to open the house, or to buy supplies for the house, or to... It's the money, the money is for the security deposit and the lease, first okay. and last month lease, and also my, uh, 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 a homeless shelter for the kids. Okay. Also. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we need to we need to help help this brother. Mm -hmm. we, we, we 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 have the money. You know, we people have a tendency of holding on to things until they die. You know, and I, I, my thing is this: if you die with what you have, and you got money, okay, you're gonna be punished for it. Okay, because if you don't give that away to some people that, that that's in need, you know, in, in your need, mm -hmm. if you don't give that money away, or you don't give the knowledge that you have away. Before you leave it, you're going to be punished for it. Mm -hmm. You know, so the people that are sitting around in their bedrooms and their living rooms with all this fancy stuff, these fancy cars and these big old houses up on the hill and a dog named Spot, we got to start giving that money away. We don't mm -hmm. want to give it all away because we want to live good. Mm -hmm. We want to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. But we got to give some of that money away so we can help the people that's less fortunate. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the children that, that the children are our future. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't give to the children, you know, the children will go under, they don't want to these penitentiaries. And and sometimes they go in the penitentiary and they don't they don't come out, mm -hmm. you know. So we want to change change the cycle. We want to change the cycle for what it should be. We want to we want to change it from the children following the fathers and the mother footsteps. Mm -hmm. We want to break the cycle mm -hmm. and allow them to have a chance, an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We need a new president. Mm -hmm. You know, we we want to allow these kids to grow up to be president. Mm -hmm. You know, to be the governors, be the mayors. Mm -hmm. You know, the children of our future. Mm -hmm. You know, and the way that you're doing it, you're doing it to help the future change the way that it should. Yes. You know, you want to give them education, you want to give them housing, you want to give them things that that's, that, that that they need mm -hmm. to have a smooth transition into life. Mm -hmm. Well, I also worked at, uh, I did some work, subcontract work at charter schools. Mm -hmm. So I write 10-week curriculums, 8-week curriculums, and I go to the charter schools and I teach the kids that the glass is half full instead of half empty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wrote another curriculum called Criminal and Addictive Thinking, mm -hmm. you know, and I wrote that one for the long-term inmate programs in prison. Mm -hmm. You know, I submitted that to Sacramento trying to get a, a contract with them. You know, to bring these programs into a prison. So who's better to put programs or write the programs for the right. prisoners inside than ex-prisoners right. who's been in there? Right. You know, we're the ones who know what they need inside. Exactly. We're the no ones who participate in these groups for 20 and 30 years. Right. They made us jump through hoops, you know, before we got out. Right. So we're the ones who can bring these programs into the prison that's to turn right. these people around. That's a fact. That's a fact. We are, yeah. we are the ones that's, that's needed to go into these county jails, into these, right. these penitentiaries, back into the penitentiary that's right. after we come home and to successful dis, uh, discharge. Mm -hmm. You know, we got some some of our community partnership managers in prison mm -hmm. won't let us come back in. Mm -hmm. you know, they say, no, you, you can't come back in. You, you, you've done time. Well, mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not coming back to, 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 to be part of the program. Mm -hmm. we, we come back to help you change the people's way of thinking. 
in prison. We don't, we don't want to be, be part of this. We want to make a difference and help the ones we left behind. And that's what we, we try to do. Exactly. You know, yeah, we got several brothers that's come home and, like you said, they got degrees since they've been home. Mm -hmm. You know, matter of fact, Nate, Nate Williams. Mm -hmm. Nate Williams come home and got a degree out in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. He tried to go back to DVI. They shut the door. They won't let him come back in. Mm -hmm. He discharged. He's not even on parole. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can't understand why we can't go back mm -hmm. and make a difference inside. Everybody in prison, sooner or later, they're going to come home. Either they're going to come home upright or they're going to be with a, with, a, with a tag on their toes. Well, this, is why, this is why I had a transitional house. So mm -hmm. those coming out, you know, that need assistance, you know, after a long time in prison, you know, a lot of them truly have issues, you sure. know. Uh, yeah. You know, if they didn't have God in their life, you know, if they didn't find peace inside, you know, and they come out here, you know, they have problems trying to readjust back sure. into society. Sure. Sure. You know, what I found when I came out was that society operates on a physical and material realm, mm -hmm. you know, and I came out operating on a spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm looking at people and, and you know, and they valuing this little stuff, you know, I, I lived in a six by nine cage sure. for 35 years. So, you know, I didn't value all the stuff that they value, you know, mm -hmm. and so uh, you got to change their they thinking, you know, uh, you know. You have, you have, you have to, you yes. have to change the way they think because they, you know, everybody want to change. Mm -hmm. Some people are scared to change. Mm -hmm. But if you give a person an opportunity to change mm -hmm. and show them how to change, they'll take that opportunity. Exactly. You see? exactly. So you have to give a person an opportunity to change because, yes. like I say, everybody wants to change. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like change. Mm -hmm. But if you give them the right thing to work with, mm -hmm. they'll accept that and they'll, and they'll change. That's right. You know, all, he's, all he's giving is the opportunity. You know, like when I was inside, you know, you know, I, I, told, I tell people that my character got me out of prison, you know, uh, integrity. You know, uh, uh, my morals, my values, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a person couldn't sell me stolen food out the kitchen, you know. Right. I would tell them, you know, I'm not going to contribute to your theft. Right. And they'll say, Calvin, what you mean by that? Right. I say, if I buy this from you, you know, stolen meat, you know, stole out the kitchen, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm contributing exactly. to your theft. I'm, I'm encouraging you to go back <laughs> right. and steal some more exactly. so I can buy it again, yeah, you know. Exactly. And so I wouldn't do that. So, you know, my character, you know, uh, is what got me out of prison, sure, you know. Sure, you're yeah. right. sure you're you know, right. and yeah. so, you know, I started teaching this side, you know. So for the last 10 years, I was teaching. I was writing curriculum, insight curriculum, anger management curriculum, mm -hmm. gang anonymous curriculum curriculum, mm -hmm. you know, and I was teaching, you know, inside to, right. to the repeat offenders and, you know, inside the chapels and everything, you know, so trying to show everybody, you know, you got choices, you know, sure. you, you know, you, whatever you do, you know, you, you have to suffer the consequences of your own choices, mm -hmm. you know, so you got to make the right choices, you, you know, choices, you know, right. God gave us all, you know, the, the ability to, to a, a free will, That's you right. know, and That's you right. have to enjoy what's right for being what's wrong. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, everybody, everybody, that's in prison, mm -hmm. I can say as soon as they're coming home, we want them to come home better than they were when they went in, mm -hmm. right? So we have to start the transition in prison, mm -hmm. right? We go to prison and we bring these programs in prison and we do the programs in prison, mm -hmm. okay? So a person that's coming home from prison, okay, he's already started the transition, mm -hmm. right? So when he come home, back to society, he's better than he was when he went, 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 went into society. Mm -hmm. So long periods of time coming home, we bring him into a, a transition housing, as you're going to start, mm -hmm. okay, as you start for the, for the youth. But sooner or later, you'll be able to do it for adults as well, mm -hmm. right? Just, 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 change, just change it around a little bit. So we want them to come home better than they were mm -hmm. and, start, and continue the transition here in society. You know, it's, it, it's very easily done. All we got to do is just do it. We need funds. We need backup. We need assistance to get it done. Yeah, but what I found difficult, though, even though I had all these degrees, in prison, you know, my BS degree in business administration, you know, uh, finance, you know, new finance, you know, accounting, you know, um, my A degree, my computer skills. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get no jobs that required a fingerprint mm -hmm. because they weren't hired. You, they seen you was an ex con, right, you know. Right. So I had to start with labor jobs, you know, I'll create my own job, right. you know. So that's the obstacle that most people find, you know, we go through prison and we get all these degrees right. and trades right. in prison, but when we come out, we can't get no job, you know. So that's the, that's the, that's the obstacle they, they have to, you know, hurdle, hurdle they have to get over. And, and, and see, that needs to be changed. Yes. Okay, because the thing is that you paid your debt to society. Mm -hmm. You did your time, mm -hmm. right? You were found suitable by a board of prison. And signed by the governor. Commissioners. And signed by the and governor. And signed by the governor. That's right. To come home. Mm -hmm. So you so you're you apparently they found that you're a different person today mm -hmm. than you were when you came to prison. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna let you go home. Mm -hmm. So then you come home, you got obstacles mm -hmm. that you gotta over you gotta you gotta come over, you gotta mm -hmm. jump over, you gotta do whatever, dig a dig up under mm -hmm. in order to make your life 
a success, mm -hmm. right? And we shouldn't have to have to go through that. That's right. But that's what, what we go through today. Come exactly. on. Exactly. You know, uh, they got background checks, mm -hmm. you know, that we can't pass. Mm -hmm. some, people, some people can't chance, uh, pass it because they, they go seven years or nine years and say, well, no, you, you've you been going like eight years. Mm -hmm. You've been going like mm -hmm. six years. Mm -hmm. And you can't pass it back. But you did your time. Mm -hmm. You paid your debts in society. That needs to be erased. Mm -hmm. You know, so all this got to be worked on. But you are making progress. You are making a difference in people's mm -hmm. lives. You know, you have Asia Academy, you know, for the for the for the juveniles, for the youth, and, and you're doing a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. You're doing a wonderful thing. Keep on doing what you're doing, my brother. Because see, I don't know to the day, you know, and I'm, I'm I got my hands in a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, that, that what you're doing is, is happening nowhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I I started inside uh, uh, studying for this, you know, and. You know, I was going to get, after I got my BS degree, I couldn't get another degree, no master degree in prison. So I decided I was going to get my master when I got out of prison in uh, sociology, you know, uh, dealing with society, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the University of Santa Monica came into this prison before I left, uh, Freedom to Choose. Mm -hmm. It was a program, you know, and they came and gave a workshop, and, you know, and I learned about spiritual psychology. And spiritual psychology deals with the heart and the soul. Mm -hmm. And so... I told my boss when I left that workshop that weekend, I said, that was the last piece of the puzzle. I was going to board the next week. Mm. I said, God wanted me to get this last piece of the puzzle. Mm. I said, mm. I got to touch these kids, uh, hearts and souls. I got to mm. get to the underlying cause. Why are they homeless at 12, 13, 14, 15 years old? Mm -hmm. You know? And I went to the board the next week, and I was released. You know, they said, you're going home in 120 days. Wow. You know? wow. And that was the last piece of the puzzle. So I came out running. You know? I already had my nonprofit uh, uh, organization bylaws and uh, drawn up you know when i came out you know so i got out in, in, in april of 2014 in may of 2014 i was filing my paperwork you know and i had my first fundraiser in 11 months and seven days after i was out you know and matter of fact people talk about your fundraiser it was outstanding you know, they give you they give you they give you a, a, a thumbs up on that that was outstanding yeah you know? and, and and i, I want to say because we don't have that much time left okay. i want to say and and, 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 and and tell you the thing that you're doing and now my brother keep on doing mm -hmm. you know we got people that, that that don't don't like what we're doing but we're doing it for a reason we ain't doing it for us mm -hmm. we're doing we're doing what we're doing for a reason mm -hmm. so they got they they, they they hate a whole lot of different things in life mm -hmm. but one thing about it for sure and two things certain you out in society mm -hmm. and you're doing things the way you want to do things mm -hmm. and continue doing it, brother don't let nothing stop you from what you're doing. Oh yeah, you this know? is this is my niche, man. You right. know, like I say, I dealt with these kids for 35 years in pr inside the prison. Yeah. So I can come out here and I can relate to them and so I can right. talk to them. You know, right. Right. yeah. You know, if it wasn't for my grandmother, you know, I would have been uh, uh, in foster care and all right. that. You know, right. so you know, at 12 years old, you know, so I try to teach them the glass is half full. That's right. You know, not half empty. There you go. Okay, my brother. Well, we want to thank the brother for coming on to the show tonight. He came travel away from Southern California. San Francisco to come on the show, and we want to thank you for coming on tonight and uh, and telling people about, about your program. Uh, you have the information on the television screen there. Uh, get with them, you know. Contact them through the internet, through the website, and uh, anything you need to know, he'll he'll answer. Okay, uh, talk to him. He'll 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 talk back to you. So we want to thank you for coming on the show. You can see the show on uh, again on Saturday nights. It's a live show tonight, but you can see it again on Saturday night on Channel 29 at 7 o'clock. And uh, tomorrow, it'll be on YouTube nationwide. So uh, tune in and watch the show. Thank you and have a good evening.